No, I didn't watch Kanye on Saturday Night Live. I am old. Here's something interesting. If anyone tells you they know whether Brett Kavanaugh is going to make it onto the Supreme Court, that person is, well, lying to you. The reality is that Kavanaugh's fate is a genuine toss-up right now. That's a change from where we were on Friday morning following Arizona Senator Jeff Flake's announcement that he would support Kavanaugh's nomination, making it an almost sure thing. Flake had second thoughts later that day and led an effort to delay the final vote on Kavanaugh until the FBI had conducted a week-long investigation into the allegations made by Christine Blasey Ford and others regarding the judge's behavior during his high school and college years. Big, big siren note. Brett Kavanaugh has denied all of these allegations categorically and unequivocally. So we are now in the middle of that FBI investigation. And while there's already tons and tons of political debate about whether the FBI is doing enough, talking to the right people, the simple fact is that we just don't know yet what this investigation is going to turn up, if anything. But just because we don't know exactly how this all is going to turn out, doesn't mean we can't game out the various ways it might play out. So let's do that. Here are four different ways the Kavanaugh nomination narrative ends. Which is most likely? I'll let you in on a little secret. I have no earthly idea. Scenario number one, the FBI investigation finds nothing and Kavanaugh gets confirmed. There are already lots and lots of questions about whether President Trump and his White House are working behind the scenes to ensure that the FBI investigation is only looking into the allegations of Ford and a second woman named Deborah Ramirez, who says that Kavanaugh exposed himself to her when they were both freshmen at Yale. That could, and I emphasize could, mean that other allegations made against Brett Kavanaugh, including that he didn't tell the truth to the Senate Judiciary Committee, aren't going to get fully investigated. If the FBI returns after this week's investigation and says essentially, nothing to see here, folks, then Kavanaugh is going to be confirmed and it's going to happen quickly. Scenario number two, the FBI investigation shows Kavanaugh lied about drinking, but Kavanaugh gets confirmed anyway. Okay, for people hoping for the FBI to find the capital T truth of what happened between Ford and Kavanaugh on that night decades ago in the DC suburbs, they're likely to be, frankly, disappointed. Yes, the FBI is going to talk to, or has already talked to, Kavanaugh's friend Mark Judge and Ford's friend Leland Kaiser. And yes, it's possible that one of those two people recants on their previous denials about being aware of the assault that Ford has alleged. But let's be honest, neither one of those is likely. What's far more likely is that the FBI provides several eyewitness interviews of people who say Kavanaugh frequently got severely inebriated during his high school and college years. People like Chad Luddington, a Yale classmate of Kavanaugh's, who told CNN on Monday in a statement, and I'm quoting here, I can unequivocally say that in denying the possibility that he ever blacked out from drinking and in downplaying the degree and frequency of his drinking, Brett has not told the truth, end quote. Now the question, is that enough to disqualify Kavanaugh in the eyes of a handful of undecided senators? In a 60 Minutes interview, Flake signaled if it can be proven that Kavanaugh lied, that would end his nomination, at least in Flake's mind. But does Flake mean lying about drinking or Kavanaugh lying about his interactions with Ford and or Ramirez? And even if Flake does vote against Kavanaugh, the judge would still be confirmed if Maine's Susan Collins and Alaska's Lisa Murkowski voted for him. Scenario number three. The FBI investigation shows Kavanaugh lied about drinking and the Senate vote to confirm him fails. Now, like I said above, Kavanaugh's fate hinges entirely on two things. One, what the investigation from the FBI turns up. And two, how a very small group of undecided senators view what the investigation turns up. So let's say, as I laid out in scenario number two above, that the FBI offers nothing conclusive on the allegations by Ford and Ramirez and the denials by Kavanaugh, and that is likely. But it does show 
through a series of interviews of people who were his friends or associates at the time, that Kavanaugh was regularly very drunk to the point of belligerence and, possibly, to the point where he couldn't remember what he was saying or doing. Now, while it's hard to know whether Flake's assertion about Kavanaugh lying applies to how the judge described his drinking, no big deal, he remembers everything, in high school and college, it's totally conceivable that the Arizona Republican sees that as disqualifying for Kavanaugh. And if Flake is willing to vote no, then Republicans can only lose one, one more of their own, assuming that no Democrats vote for the judge. Sidebar. Joe Manchin and Heidi Heitkamp, that's Joe Manchin in West Virginia, Heidi Heitkamp in North Dakota, might vote for Kavanaugh, mostly because they represent state Trump won by a ton in 2016. And they're both up for re-election in five weeks. Collins and Murkowski, the two Republicans on the fence, were both on that fence before all of these latest allegations about Kavanaugh. If the FBI finds that Kavanaugh didn't tell the truth about his drinking, could it be the tipping point for one or both of them? Now, if you think that Republicans won't hold a vote, even if they think they might lose, <laughs> you don't know today's Republican Party. Their base wanted a vote a week ago or three weeks ago, and they want every senator on their side on the record about Kavanaugh. There's almost no way a vote doesn't happen unless... Scenario number four, the FBI finds damning evidence on sexual assault allegations and Kavanaugh withdraws. Let's start here. This is by far the least likely of the four scenarios, and that's for a very simple reason. Ford and Ramirez tell totally different stories than Kavanaugh about the events in question. And less than until a neutral third party who witnessed the alleged incidents emerges who can confirm or deny the accusations, it's just very unlikely that we find out what really happened between Kavanaugh and the two women. But if that were to happen, or someone, like say Mark Judge, reconsiders his insistence that he never witnessed Kavanaugh do anything like the episode described by Ford, then it's all over for the judge. He would either withdraw of his own accord or be forced into withdrawing by the Trump White House. Either way, the result would be the same. The White House would have to start the process of picking a new court nominee almost from scratch. Now they could try to make that happen in a lame duck session of Congress after the November election, but before the new Congress is seated in January. But confirming a Supreme Court justice in a lame duck session makes for incredibly tough politics. Now, Republicans could hope that they keep control of the Senate in November, and Donald Trump picks a new nominee who gets confirmed in the new Congress, and that absolutely could happen. Then there is this Republican nightmare. Democrats win back the Senate and spend the next two years blocking all of Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominees, effectively leaving the seat open until after the 2020 election. Now, I'm not saying that will happen, but make no mistake, it could. Now, this level of uncertainty about a job as important and influential as a Supreme Court seat is literally totally unprecedented. This whole thing could go in a lot of almost directly opposite directions. And that is the point. We're posting new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure to tune in.